When I think of the name Dr. Dakira, it just brings a smile uh, to my face, you know, uh, Dr. D, as we affectionately call him. He is a combination of 50% brilliance and 50% complete charm. So refreshing and a bit of a maverick in this uh, profession. He trusts his own inner voice. Here is a man who came to Detroit with the crazy idea that we could have opera here. My mother would clean houses so that she could earn enough money for me to have piano lessons. And my dream in those early years was to be a concert pianist. And uh, I remember engineering students who used to come and practice, and they played as well as I did. And I thought, no, <laughs> I'm not going to make much of myself. So it was really about opera that I said, you know, I love this because it's a combined art. I love the bringing together of everybody. David was the head of the School of Music at Oakland University. And he did a little program called Overture to Opera that introduced the operas that the Met was going to bring to Detroit that season. I began to feel that this was the foundation of what should be our own opera company. Because an opera company should not just be doing opera, it should be part of a community. He came to me and he said, would you consider helping me start a new opera company? And my immediate response was, well, I don't know a lot about opera. I'm a theater person. And he said, I know a lot about opera, but I don't know how to run anything. OK, what productions? Oh, I don't know yet what productions. Uh, do you have any singers? No, we don't have any singers. And I said, well, where are you going to perform? And he said, we don't have a theater yet. I knew the odds would be against him. It's against anybody who tries to produce opera anywhere. It's particularly difficult in a city which is a poor city, which it was even then. He was there to make people believe that everything was possible, that opera was possible in Detroit, along with education and reaching out to young people. Karen DeCare sensitized me to the fact that education was just as important as the artistic quality of what you put on stage. It's not only our future in terms of audience, but it also gives us a way of bringing people even closer to an art form. David recognized early on that arts education was getting eliminated from school budgets and that opera companies had enlightened self-interest in developing the next generation of audience member. David DeCare is very good at attracting diverse audience because he brings in diverse operas. This is how we pull in people and let them know that opera is for everyone. Whether it's the African-American community or the, or the Armenian community, name a community and David is embracing them. It's not just in Detroit, it was also in Orange County where he helped to start an opera company. After about a decade of going back and forth, I knew that I would have to make a choice. And I said, I need to create an opera house in Detroit because that is going to help revitalize the city. I said, that for me is more important. This facility was a rundown movie theater built back in the 20s in Detroit's heyday. I brought Luciano Pavarotti here. And I was embarrassed because, first of all, you couldn't even step on the stage. You would have fallen through. And I said, Luciano, this is going to be an opera house. And so he sang, and he said, yes. He said, I think so. David took us over to see the new opera house, and he was very excited about it. And they all kind of went, oh, that's, yeah, this is really something, David, you know, being supportive. But we had no idea how this could ever become what indeed it did. It's been a great day for the city of Detroit when that opera house opened its doors. This is really the center of Detroit's renaissance right here. And a lot of it had to do with David's commitment to this project. It's one thing to pay for a ticket, but people do more than that. They're going to, to the restaurants, you know, they're walking around to see the positive changes in the city. So there's a multiplier impact that it's hard to put a dollar figure on. Then I always felt the first new opera that we do in this opera house should really reflect the city in a very special way that honors and pays tribute to the African-American community, the major uh, population of our city. Just 70 years before the opening of Margaret Garner, African-Americans were not allowed in that theater. Never before had I seen such great diversity in the opera house. 
I was so proud of him for bringing that experience to so many people. And they all laughed and cried at the same moments. And in that place, in those nights, there was no racism in Detroit. It took someone with vision and with leadership and with intellect and with compassion to make it happen. I will always be grateful to him for giving us the stage, as it were, to be able to tell this very, very important story. What I got to know about David was he also happened to be a composer, one of those rare bilingual people in the music business who was both an administrator and an artist. This board had discovered that I had written an opera. I had always kept it secret. You mean you're going to not premiere this opera here? Because I thought I'd do it elsewhere. I didn't want to be publishing my own work. No, no, that's not acceptable. We're going to do it here. It was kind of a culmination of my life here. And uh, I thought the city was going to just not stop. In the middle of uh, real economic distress, there are people like David DiChiara to not just keep us alive, but also keep a, an eye on the future. And that optimism is what we truly need in Detroit. And he's become an icon in this town as this town has changed. He's one of the few constants we have here. He's a 40-year constant. He's been able to sort of ignite this fire in the community. He's a great steward, a great leader, a great role model for the whole of the industry. Dr. Kira, he's one that I look up to because I know he's about making a difference in the world. I love him. I love him. I love him. <laughs>